In this lesson, we're going to go through the basics of snare drum tuning. Now, there's a lot of different opinions on how one should tune his or her snare drum, um, but it's really down to personal choice and the type of situation that you're using uh, your snare for. There's a lot of different uh, choice of snare drums themselves, and um, the tuning of different drums will complement those uh, sizes in different ways. So let's get into it. I'm going to actually take this from the point of view where I'm actually changing a drum head. So occasionally, um, if a drum head sound starts to sound really bad, no matter what you're tuning, uh, at some point or another, you're going to have to change it. Also, if you're a, a brush player, um, you use coated drum heads, um, you'll notice eventually the, uh, the coating will start to wear off and you'll get a completely smooth drum head, in which case you may need to change it again. So, first things first, we'll have to take off the top drum head. Um, you'll need, obviously, you'll need a drum key. I've got two drum keys to make this a bit quicker. Um, basically, if you do have two keys, uh, or even if you do have one key, you want to start with, well, you can start with any lug, um, give it a couple of turns, and then move over to the opposite lug and start detuning that. And that's so that we relieve the tension uh, of the hoop evenly, um, sort of like you would do on a uh, car tire. So, I've done that lug, I'll go over here. I'll go as far away as possible from this lug now, over to here, over to here. This being a 10 lug snare, I should have five separate uh, turns to do if I'm doing two at a time. Yeah. A lot quicker with two keys. Okay, so this particular drum, I've just got to get the lugs uh, nice and loose. I don't have to unscrew them all the way because uh, I've got the Yamaha Novu lug which will pop off like that uh, as soon as it's, it's loose enough. So you just get it to a tension where the lug will pop off but you'll find it'll hang right in there. No need to unscrew the tension rod all the way. Just quickly pop the rest off. You can always get a friend to help you if, um, if you've got a lot of drums to do. It'll be good to put away a good half day if you've got to reskin your whole kit. Okay, looks like all my lugs are loose enough now. I'll just. No, not quite. There we go. And there you go. Uh, Again, this is the Yamaha uh, No View lug, uh, which is slowly being replaced by the Yamaha Hook lug, which you can see in some of my other videos. But it's a nice sort of clip-on design as opposed to the fixed lug, uh, which, of course, you'll have to uh, undo your tension bolts all the way. So we'll just get rid of the hoop for a second and remove the skin. Now that leaves us with an empty shell. Um, this is a Yamaha standard copper snare drum. I'll get rid of that one, and what I'll do is grab a new skin and whack it right on. Now, a lot of drummers um, like to seat their drum heads. So, to seat the drum head means to basically um, st stretch the stretch the plastic um, of the head, uh, wear it in just a little bit. Um, on its first tuning. So what you do to see the drum head, uh, you put it in the position you want, put the logo wherever you want it. I like it to, to basically be at the front there, matching with my, my Yamaha logo. And once it's sort of sitting on there, you just push down into the center of the head with the smooth part of your palm. And you can hear the, the glue and the plastic and the mylar there sort of cracking a bit. You don't have to worry about damaging the head as long as you're not uh, using a sharp part of your, like a, a bony part of your hand or a drumstick or something like that. You always use a smooth uh, palm or something like that. Just to give the drum head a good few presses like that. Uh, that will sort of, uh, again, just it's, it sort of wears the head in a little bit at the edges. Um, if there's any glue that's sort of a bit too hard, it will sort of loosen it up uh, ready for tuning. So, lightly seat the drum head like so, and we're ready to re-hoop the drum. So, um, again, uh, 
there's no specific way you have to mount uh, most hoops. Uh, some drum hoops are specially designed to be hit a certain way, but most top hoops are uh, they're universal in, in terms of where you put them. So I'm just going to put that right on there. And clip the lugs back onto their posts. Might have to loosen one if they don't quite clip on straight away. And I'm basically just turning the key with these particular lugs and also with the Yamaha hook lug. Just turning the key enough to make sure that the, um, the lug is gripping to its post and not ha hanging off loosely. So just till I feel the, um, the lug pulling the hoop down the tiniest bit and then I stop. Okay. All the lugs are sturdy and in place. You might hear that it, uh, the drum actually has some tone to it at this point. It sounds a bit ugly. It sounds like a big old bass drum more than a snare drum. And that's because the, uh, the skin has almost no tension at all. Uh, but it's not quite time to tune yet. What we've got to do is uh, seat the head further. Uh, now that the head is in basically in position and uh, the head has been ever so slightly tensioned by the hoop of the drum. We'll just do the same as we did when we first uh, mounted the head and just seat the drum a little bit, seat the skin, sorry, a little bit further. You can hear a few pops and cracks there, <laughs> but that's all good. And this, uh, as well as um, just slightly stretching the skin, it also puts it in place to make sure that maybe 1% maybe of the skin isn't hanging a little bit too far over each end. So um, it's looking pretty good right now. It sort of feels even. I didn't hear any more pops and cracks uh, when seeding the skin that time. So it's basically ready for tuning. Now again, I've just turned each tension right enough so that there's that little bit of pull between the uh, hoop of the drum and the uh, lug, each individual lug. So there, in theory, there should be a, a pretty much an even tuning uh, that exists between uh, all the lugs in the different areas of the drum. Uh, the reason we have so, so many lugs is because um, to fine tune a drum, uh, you ha actually have to ch uh, tune each individual area of the drum. This being, again, a, a 10 lug snare. There are 10 different tuning areas to pay attention to. But uh, it's not that difficult, so here we go. What we're going to do is just uh, turn each lug a uh, maybe a quarter, uh, a half turn or maybe one full turn, try and get some, some tone and some tension into this skin. So again, I've got my two lugs. I'll just place them at opposite sides, and we'll go with, uh, we'll go with one full turn. So half a turn, one full turn, and now again, we go to the furthest possible uh, tension rod. So again, one half turn, one full turn. Okay, again, it's just like uh, when changing car tires, you would uh, go to the furthest point to do your next uh, uh, application of tension to make sure that uh, tension is applied evenly and not just in one area of the hoop. Now we'll go to the, so we've done here, we've done here, probably want to go to here, half turn, full turn, uh, opposite ends again, half turn, full turn, and the last one should be here. This one, half turn, full turn. Okay, and we've just done one turn on each lug. Let's see how it sounds. Still pretty ugly indeed. Okay, so on a snare drum, uh, especially a, a sort of semi-piccolo snare drum like this, um, you find you'll need quite a bit of tension in the top head to, uh, to get a, a decent snare drum sound. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and give probably another one and a half, maybe even two turns on each lug um, to really crank, uh, crank the tone up. So let, let's just skip through that now. Okay, so as you can see, I did quite a few turns on each lug there. Again, don't worry too much about uh, over-tightening your snare drum. Uh, as long as you're applying even tension to each lug 
and uh, all, again always moving uh, to the furthest opposite lug after each uh, turn. And so let's listen to the snare drum now. A fairly high pitched sort of ping sound it's giving off. What you want to do is um, actually tap the areas uh, with a tuning key or with a drumstick. Tap the area of the skin closest to each tuning rod or even in between the tuning rods to see what the individual uh, tones of the drum are going to sound like. Okay, so they sound pretty uniform right now. But the only way to really tell is to actually mute the, uh, the bottom or the resonant head, uh, or in this case, the, the snare side head. So let me go ahead and do the same thing. I'll tap each tuning lug while holding the snare side head uh, so I don't get any uh, what they call sympathetic resonance from the snare side head. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Let's see how it sounds when we uh, take the snares up and hit it with a stick. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let me now show you how to tune your snare wires and also the bottom head of your snare drum. Okay, so I've got a nice new uh, fresh snare side head, so I don't need to particularly change uh, my, uh, my resonant or my, again my snare side head just now. Um, but I would like to show you how to uh, tune your snare wires and uh, my preferred tuning for the snare side head. I like a fairly tight tension on the uh, snare side head. Uh, I usually match it up roughly, uh, depending on the snare drum, I usually uh, match the tone of my snare side head uh, to my batter side head. So if I quickly turn it around, this is my, I get my freshly tuned batter side head. And what I'll do is come like this so that the uh, snares are turned off and the snares actually hang down like this. I will use the palm of my hand to mute the batter head and Okay, there's a few uh, lugs out of tune there since the last time I tuned it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, take off my snare wires. And uh, of course, the snare mechanism and uh, the tensioner mechanism is a little bit different on every drum, uh, or at least you know between brands of drums. Um, this again being like a semi-piccolo snare has a very small sized uh, tuning mechanism. So what I'll do, I believe I have to take it off on this side, this one just requires a one uh, tension bolt to be released and it's sort of a quick release mechanism on that one right there. And what I'll do is just feed these wires out of the way. Let's do the quick release on this side as well. Okay, so I'll just get those out of the way for a second. So I'll just focus on the tone of the head. Again, I'll quickly get the tone of my batter head. Whoop. Mute the bottom head, listen to the top head. You can hear very different tonal qualities from the, uh, the different thicknesses of the head. So what I'll do is match up the tones of, of all the different, uh, again, tuning areas of this skin. I'll go around and tapping the tuning key uh, just on the edge of the skin near each uh, tension rod and we'll match up the tones.
So what I'm listening for is any, uh, I've got the, the, the fundamental note of uh, this uh, drum in my head. And if I hear any, uh, any tuning, uh, tuning rods that are slightly higher or lower than that fundamental note, I'm either uh, tuning down or tuning up to compensate uh, to try and get uh, pretty close to one overall uh, note uh, no matter where I'm hitting the, the, the skin. That one's too high. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So what well, we've got to put our snares back on. Um, it's always good to just get the feel of your snare drum and just sort of have a play around uh, to see what you can and can't do uh, with it. And it's always good to also have a clean every time you open up your snare drum when you change your head. Uh, have a look inside and make you know, get any drum drumstick pieces or dust out of there. So uh, what we'll do is refit uh, our snare wires. Now, if it's the first time, if you're replacing the string or uh, refitting the snare wires for some reason, um, you'll have to make sure that when you fit the wires, they sit um, in roughly an even distance from each end of the, uh, the skin. Now, you might not be able to see with the uh, little protectors there, um, but basically, if the snare wires sit too far over here, of course, they'll be hanging over that end and uh, that won't work at all. So roughly in the middle, I'll refit the quick release brackets here. Getting things tight, but not too tight. Definitely don't want them to fall off during a gig, but we don't want them to uh, be over tightened either. So you can see I've just fitted the uh, first quick release bracket and my snare wires are too close to this end. So what I'm gonna have to do is un untighten the, uh, the string lock, if you will loosen up the string there and drag the snare wires closer to the center of the drum. So we've got an even distance between the, the end of the snare wires and the hoop. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna re-tension the string lock. Of course, you may be using a string or you may be using the, uh, the tape to uh, fasten your snare wires. Not much of a difference if you ask me. The string looks a bit better though, a bit more old school. Okay, back to this end. Now we're gonna refit this quick release bracket. And then we'll tighten her up. And you can see right there, my snare wires are at the moment are way too loose and I've got my, my tensioner on maximum there, so it's the, technically the snares are turned on, but as I uh, turn the drum around, there's absolutely no contact between the snare wires and the head. Of course, that's because I've uh, loosened that string too much, so what I'm gonna have to do is go to the other side and apply a little bit of tension uh, to the string on the tensioner side. So what I'm gonna do is loosen those string locks Before I pull that string tight, I'm actually going to uh, turn my snare wires off. That is to drop the lever down, uh, however your particular drum achieves that. And now I'm going to apply a little bit of tension to that string. And this is the, the fine tuning part. So you find it, if you, uh, you know, if at this point, if your snares are turned off and you apply too much tension to that string, uh, you won't be able to turn your snares on again. It will just be too tight. So I'm just putting a, a medium amount of tension on that string as I pull it up. Hold it there. Lock the string in place once again. Again, tight but not over tight. Just thumb tight, we say. Okay, now I should be able to easily turn my snares on again. Yep. And not too bad. Um, that's probably probably a little tight for my taste. I like the uh, the sound of a snare drum 
that responds to basically any touch. Um, it may not respond to a feather falling on it, but uh, anything, anything more than that, the snares themselves should respond as well as the tone of the drum. So I'm going to need a little bit more snare response. And the way to do that, believe it or not, is to loosen the snares very slightly. So I like to turn my uh, snares off uh, on this particular model, anti-clockwise turn on the tensioner, turn the snares back on again. Don't know if you can hear that, but they're a lot more sensitive already to the touch. Uh, some mechanisms you can play with with the tensioner while the snares are turned on. You can hear now my snare wire is getting a little bit too loose. Very sensitive, um, but uh, they don't have that crisp attack that I'm looking for. So. Just loose enough to give me that um, that low volume sensitivity, but when I strike the drum again, I should get a nice loud crack and not too much buzz from the snares after that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on how to tune your snare drum. Have fun tuning your own drums, and I'll see you on the next lesson.